Asi for being here with us today. I hope everyone's staying well and keeping safe with the rise of uh, COVID cases here. Yang penting sehat semuanya dan hati-hati juga as we have to continue to be cautious and careful as we go along. So today's topic is about building resilient brands and getting ready for this year's Ramadan rush. Of course, keeping the digital aspect and mobile in the center of it all. As we are all aware, the pandemic has once again changed the consumer behavior across the globe. Yes, these changes are not new as we have gone through them uh, since the past two years, but surely this lockdown has further accelerated adoption of shifting behavior. And because Ramadan is one of the most celebrated festivals in Indonesia, this change is especially highlighted in the mobile first economy of this country due to the transformation being anchored by smartphones. Let me also emphasize that Indonesia is expected to be one of the top five countries in the next five years to be listed as a smartphone superpower nation. So this transformation that we're talking about is extremely rapid and fast paced. But let's also focus on what's right here and right now as we are one month away from the fasting period and a couple of months away from Ramadan. So let's look into what 2020 Sorry, let's look into what 2022 holds in store for us here in Indonesia this time around. What should brands and advertisers focus on, keeping in mind the current situation, of course, and how can we, as an industry, help one another better understand the potential solutions for your upcoming Ramadan campaigns? And something to ponder upon that, you know, do all of these learnings end when the Ramadan period ends, or can we take them forward all through 2022? So, yes. Looking forward to today's session, just hold on, looking forward to today's session with our experts on the panel and with each and every one of you. I will definitely do a formal introduction of them in a bit, but for now, I'd like to wholeheartedly thank our partners for today. In Mobi, who have also been members of MMA across the region since many, many years, in Mobi's strength lies in their technology platforms and their exclusive access to mobile intelligence and also to create new paths to understand, identify, engage, and provide the right guidance to consumers. Terima kasih team, team in Mobi and terima kasih to all of our speakers today from Telkom Cell and Mindshare for making this session possible. But before I formally introduce you to the fine gentlemen on the panel, please allow me to share with you a little bit about MMA as an association. We are a not-for-profit global association headquartered out of New York. We are over uh, 800 plus members across 14 regional offices and 21 countries spaced out across US, Latin America, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Asia Pacific. We are a neutral industry body that welcomes brands, marketers, agencies, media, publishers, telcos, technology providers, device manufacturers, pokoknya semuanya. Of course, we can't have all of our member uh, logos placed here, but this is just to show you that we are an open and neutral platform, welcoming every vertical from the advertising and marketing industry globally, regionally, and here in Indonesia as well. But who are we? Why are we here? And what is our purpose? Uh, we truly believe that modern marketing is the next big thing. And mobile is the quickest way, of course, for chief marketers and brands to reach out to their consumers. And the COVID-19 situation has literally placed us in the center of this space. So, you know, we primarily reach out to the chief marketers to help them through this process. We uh, are here to also help enhance and accelerate transformation and innovation of modern marketing through this digital space. Um, our initiatives stand under these four main pillars, as you can see on your screen, and below each of these pillars are the activities we work on all year through. But for Indonesia specifically, we have further compartmentalized them into three subcategories as our key priorities for Indonesia. Um, our board of directors and members, partners of MMA, are our biggest strength, the strength in making each and every initiative that we plan possible, you know. Uh, but I won't take too much time here. Uh, just wanted to share with you that this is what 2022 will look uh, ahead for us. And we would love to have you join us for all of our programs. So let us know if you're interested and come and share some ideas with us as well. I'll take a moment here to pause so you can scan this code and be part of all our upcoming webinars in 2022. Next slide. 
Please, thank you, Arif. I will again pause a little uh, just for you to look at some of our immediate plans for 2022. Contact us if you need anything, but this is what the lineup of our initiatives look like, okay? This is a code for our next event, which is on the 9th of March. Uh, this is a half day annual virtual event uh, called the Ramadan Insights event. Uh, it'll be super interesting to see some of the partners that we have share their data and insights. We have, you know, Twitter, Spotify, Remerge, Trade Desk, MGID, and many, many more guest speakers and experts. So do join us for, 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 these pro for this program next uh, month, 9th of March. All right, so regarding today's webinar, I know we are all familiar with Zoom, uh, but for those who did need a slight reminder, so there's a chat section and there's a Q&A section. Um, request you all to please pour your questions into the Q&A section only, not the chat, chat section, but do mention your name, your designation and your company as well. So at least, you know, our thought leaders and speakers today can actually address your questions and address your concerns. Other than that, if we don't have time for all of the questions, uh, you know, reach out to us uh, at Indonesia at mmaglobal.com and we'll bridge the introduction between you and all, all of our speakers here today. Happy to do that, okay? Um, yeah, so coming back to today's fabulous uh, session, here's an overview of the topic for those who missed it in the beginning. I'm sure it'll be an interesting panel with a lot of things to learn and implement for the upcoming Ramadan. But yeah, uh, let me just jump on to the introductions of our speakers, all right? For those who don't know me yet, once again, my name is Shanti, Country Head and Board of Director of MMA Indonesia. Plus, I am your host for today. I have the honor and privilege to introduce you to all of our speakers and panelists for today's session. These are remarkable personalities. I call, them, I call all of them celebrity stars because they've had years of experience in bringing their organizations to a higher level with each passing year. So we are fortunate to have them all as part of our program here today. Terima kasih sekali lagi kepada speakers yang telah hadir hari ini. We really appreciate your time and dedication towards MMA Indonesia. Terima kasih in Mogi sekali lagi. Let me start the fantastic introductions as promised earlier. I will start <clears throat> by introducing you to Masranga Gandina, GM Data Solutions Business and Partnership from Telkom Cell. Welcome Masranga, selamat datang. Terima kasih for joining us on this program and being loyal members of MMA Indonesia as well. Masranga, I must say you're quite a famous personality as I had many of our members and partners praise you when they got to know you're one of our stars for today. Uh, they're excited to hear your thoughts. Sarude Papanya, uh, celebrity hari ini, salah satu Masranga. So welcome once again. Happy to have you here. Next, I'd like to warmly welcome Rajan Vishwadeep, Principal Partner, Data Tech and Performance Marketing from Mindshare Indonesia. Welcome, Rajan. Thank you for joining us here today. We are also grateful to Mindshare Indonesia for being part of MMA as members too. And it's always good to have, have you here with us, Rajan. This is not the first time you've been invited uh, on an MMA platform as a speaker. So now you know, we love to have you with us even more. Pleasure is, <laughs> pleasure is all mine, Shanti. Welcome back, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, looking forward to today with you. Next, I'd like to invite on to this virtual stage, uh, Narayan Murthy, Director, Digital Native and Performance Southeast Asia from InMobi, also our partners for today. Welcome back yet again, NM. Happy to have you with us. Well, for everyone here, I like to call Bapa Narayan with his initials NM because of his personality and style. And I'm sure most of you will agree to that after you actually watch him moderate this panel today in his unique uh, style of his. But happy to have you with us, NM. And thank you for partnering with us <clears throat> on this webinar and inviting such fantastic speakers with you today. So yes. With this, I shall request uh, Masarif to stop sharing the screen so that these three amazing gentlemen can take over from this point onwards and start with their panel discussion. Terima kasih sekali lagi teman-teman for your time with us today. Wish you all the best. Silakan NM, the stage is all yours. Over to you. Selamat siang Indonesia. Thank you so much uh, MMA team uh, for making this happen. Uh, it's It's been difficult times I know to get everybody together at one place even virtually it's becoming difficult. That has been our times. Uh, but thank you so much for making it happen uh, and partnering with InMobi to make this uh, uh, kind of an annual event right now. For, for But I hope uh, we raise up to the expectations set by Shanti of celebrity hood 
if I can put it that way. Uh, maybe we should improve on our looks a little better for celebrity status, but we are working on it, Shanti, we promise. Uh, celebrity from a, from a point of view uh, of uh, experience, yes, I'm sure we have a fantastic uh, uh, two gentlemen with me who have uh, enough and more to share uh, with each one of us and uh, discuss um, in this festive uh, environment. Um, Ramadan obviously is a is a great place uh, for families, for society to come together, to ponder upon, to reflect, um, both spiritually, both uh, and you know, and as a society, uh, it, it brings everybody together, and that's the essence of uh, of Ramadan. Uh, but last two years, uh, and and I'll dive right into the conversation uh, because I think um, we, as our uh, you know. Uh, both the gentlemen and I, we prepared a lot uh, to talk about. And we also are cognizant of the fact that if we start talking about these topics, we'll continue forever. Unfortunately, the time is of, uh, uh, you know, in, in limited uh, quantity. So we'll, we'll right away kick into the, the whole aspect of why we are here and what we want to discuss, right? There is obviously uh, building brands has always been difficult, right? And we have spent enough time uh, in our each of our careers, and I'm sure a lot of people who are listening or tuned into this uh, session today, um, building plans has always been difficult. In normal times, it was difficult, and today, uh, in the in the times we are living, where we can't go out, uh, we can't meet people, we can't interact with our brands, uh, the whole experience of how brand building is is getting done in these times is a completely different world altogether. There is no playbook, there is no framework, there is no uh, benchmark, there's no comparison of what is right and what is wrong, right? So, uh, in a way, nature, Mother Earth told us uh, uh, how small we are in front of the, the whole fury, right? Of course, uh, it, it, is, it is a sad thing when you lose somebody close and we all probably have some sad parts to talk about. But coming back to the larger question that it has kind of democratized each one of us. Every brand is same now. Every brand has to reinvent. There's no advantage. There's no front. There's no back. With that in mind, let me set out with a very strange question I had uh, when I was writing this document, which I was sharing with everybody. We talk, we talk about Ramadan every year. And we talk about that month of fasting and then month of Ramadan uh, as a finite time period, right? But in the last two years, we have not done anything, uh, you know, outside, which, which, which will demarcate or differentiate this time from anything else. So I will start with the question which has been pondering me that why we weren't talking about Ramadan as a season? Don't you think all 12 months is Ramadan now? Every day is Ramadan. Every day is an opportunity for conversations like this. Every month is a Ramadan month, wherein we are together with the family, touch wood, you know, thank God for that. And brands are trying to reach us. We are trying to reach the audience. We are trying to do everything. With that thought, I want to open the conversation to, you know, Master Anga, uh, in terms of what is your, what is your view on that? Just talk about the the pandemic the after effects and what i just said why should we celebrate only ramadan ramadan is 12 months we should we should be present everywhere yeah i guess i guess that's such an interesting opening questions and uh maybe why you asked me first because i might have more context because as an indonesian uh, this is such a huge festive season right uh, yeah. compared to any other uh, region in the market um, but I guess, uh, first of all, the past two years, again, has become a new normal. Uh, so I, I believe everyone of us sitting here, not thinking it as a blocker, not thinking it as a, as a hurdle, but we're seeing it as an opportunity. That's uh, once and for all. Uh, they're talking about consumer, the journey has evolved. The new normal itself has dissolved into everyday life. Uh, and this is now more than ever. Uh, brands, uh, products, uh, advertiser, uh, ranging from the big players until the SMB, uh, need to think it through carefully how 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 moving forward they would like to to act. 
and having a growth based roadmap is becoming more important than ever and then here comes the data that that needs to be crunched that needs to be looked after uh, on on how to solve that so for example looking into the past two years when when uh, covid suddenly surging uh, the year after that for example online shopping behavior looking at it with our data is almost doubling a year after covid emerged and not only that when we're double click onto this in uh, into uh, that insight the 60% of the growth source is from outside of java that's such an interesting data because that means all of the indonesian now is becoming more savvy uh, yeah. uh, that's one way to put it but also everyone start looking into the new normal of the frictionless journey frictionless shopping frictionless behavior so uh, not to mention as well when we're uh, talking about the 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 other side of the financial how do, how do they pay it how do they how do they collect the money because the growth in online banking e wallet and fintech is just like crazy in indonesia again the the the, the key factor that i might uh, take upon is a frictionless journey for everyone so the needs to create a more meaningful a more seamless interaction between brands within products and also their consumer uh, as well as stepping into the larger pool because now everyone has access to it is becoming more important is becoming quite critical so the the access is open so it's now it's now like the race for all of the producer for all of the products uh, racing into 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 tapping into into their market and specifically talking about the ramadan what's interesting is uh, with this new normal with this covid surging it also invites a new trends of ramadan we um, honestly we cannot overlook that ramadan is uh, one of one of the biggest thing i mean government has stopped uh, two years in the past uh, the mudik yeah uh, one tried to stop it uh, i don't think it can wait any longer so because because it's already in the in the blood of indonesian but specifically as as we can see the uh, the smaller part of the culture has evolved so for example people can no longer do the buka bersama breakfasting together yeah and then what do they do sending foods sending gift things so the the online uh, food delivery uh, all of the small medium business uh, online order is becoming like overloaded yeah uh, uh, communal and also uh, religious activities previously held in the mosque and everything now is becoming virtual uh, mudik itself everyone now jumps into google Meet, into zoom and uh, even your grandma and grandpa that uh, resides on the rural area they learn how to do the VC, the video call to do the virtual mudik so i guess those moments especially on the religious and the communal activities has sl- slowly but surely evolved into everything is becoming frictionless so back into Absolutely. the brands and commercial i guess uh, all the big players need to think about it because i'm i'm just putting uh, a little bit profiting thought in here from what i'm seeing the smaller player like the small medium businesses slightly more faster on adapting this way i uh, absolutely i mean that's a that's a great point and that will be a great segue for rajan right rajan your opening thoughts obviously as a as a brand custodian and uh, having worked with so many brands working with so many brands this would be a very unique challenge for uh, because it's not just you are ready the brand needs to be ready the consumer uh, access needs to be ready the data needs to be ready there are so many facets of planning which uh, you guys need to make sure that they are available but firstly your thoughts on why should ramadan be one month and uh, uh, it's a new normal every day should be ramadan and then how do you you convince your brands to do something like that right right so, uh, hello everyone and first of all thanks uh, shanti and adam for having me here it's a pleasure right uh, i think uh, the biggest impact in fact i'm going to use some uh, language that we typically use with brands and in the agencies right uh, what ranga just described is actually uh, a change in the consumer journey and experience um, and i think there have been some drastic changes in in those aspect in the last couple of years right? yeah and it's both in the quantum and pace of change so at the outset i think most of us understand the impact but perhaps not all of us appreciate the quantum of impact that these two years have had on the consumer behavior 
right and that consumer behavior is true ramadan or no ramadan right? right so the baseline has sort of changed and of course when it comes to that one specific month you sort of build on top of that yeah right and so look this typically a you know a longer adoption cycle for any new technology especially uh, that needs to bring about a consumer behavior change but what has happened here is that we had an extended uh, pandemic period that didn't just necessitate necessitate uh, a need based usage of these digital services but because of the elongated time period it brought about some widespread behavioral changes right, right. and so when the the dust finally settled uh, we found a huge increment in the share of population in indonesia uh, that could be qualified as digital native right and let me share some data points right So on an average users are spending about 8.5 hours every day on internet out of which about 6 hours is on mobile internet Correct. right and now i was just reading one of the reports from uh, statista uh, that estimated that about 25% of adult population in indonesia has switched from offline shopping to online only shopping in at least one consumption category so that's a huge trend and one that by the way a lot of present day brands are actually leveraging and now complement that with the you know with about i think 27% increase in the mobile internet speeds thanks to my fellow panelist <laughs> uh, which by the way is now at about uh, 16 mbps and uh, smarter and better devices yeah. what you get is a very vibrant and fulfilling experience for the end users on mobile right now when you bring all of that into the context of ramadan this year as a brand wouldn't you want to share your story where the consumers are organically and and look for engagement opportunities where sort of there's least resistance so to speak right sure you would and as a matter of fact a number of brands have actually invested significantly in the digital and data infrastructure much like how you know mindshare has also invested in the talents in the space that are needed to leverage this change and i think those brands will sort of come out ahead in this ramadan period uh, so absolutely i mean this uh, there is a we we are definitely accepting the fact that the baseline has changed the there is a huge shift in the basic consumer behavior tenets itself and you have rightly put that uh, extended percentage of population is can be qualified now as digital natives right uh, from a from a family point of view right i mean ranga was mentioning about very local cultural nuances of indonesia like mudik uh, where people used to travel and meet and that is not possible now and suddenly the the zooms and the teams and the google links have taken a place in those conversations and we all know that we have these whatsapp groups which were there even before but suddenly they have this rejuvenated interest in uh, creating those more groups and connecting on video became very important and, and a lot of other stuff right so taking a leap from there and saying uh, maybe rajan you can start with this con- saying that personalization is very critical because it's an online customer now and because the 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 finally we are arriving at a stage where the digital will take over or already taken over in terms of spends and in terms of time spent and all of that i don't even want to get there to set the benchmark anymore but that also brings that there is a lot of clutter it's not your brand or my brand or anybody else brand everybody understands the same context right that means that there is an inherent need to differentiate yourself to this newly minted digital native consumer because he has too many choices yeah so how do you constantly work with your set of brands in creating those personalized experiences of course and in markets like indonesia or india or china it's all about scale so experiences but will scale is the is the key mantra right so how do you do that against a, a, a old fashion probabilistic modeling and then obviously the new deterministic model and then i'll hear from you and then probably we'll go to masranga from from a from a very data ownership point of view right so we'll let's start with you rajan all right sure i think totally agree uh, you're right and i'm uh, providing personalized experiences is something that consumers you know uh, have come to ex- uh, expect and it's sort of a no brainer for brands today 
and much has been said and published uh, to establish that personalization is a necessary condition to business success right Correct. so let me begin from there a number of brands are using personalization as an important tool to gain competitive advantage in you know cutting through that uh, clutter that you spoke about however it's easier said than done right so working with brands and looking at some of the challenges uh, it requires a lot of work at all levels within an organization especially at an executive decision making level right since the data that powers personalization requires investment in data technologies right and so today some brands have invested behind first party data infrastructure as well as uh, third party data partnerships that helps in understanding and forming audience strategies a uh, user intent in real time and the ability to sort of automate some of these insights to power media activation right so for example one of the b2c brands that i work with uses site analytics crm and and dmp to capture every single engagement that any user has with the brand across any touch point right and as you'd be able to imagine then the simple use cases of being able to suggest the the most appropriate product with a key feature you know that is probably making going to make a difference between a conversion and a missed out sale yeah are to a large extent they are automated right correct and uh, depending on the recency and frequency of interaction brand is able to upweight or downweight media exposures bringing about both uh, effectiveness and efficiencies but uh, this is sort of just the beginning right uh, for instance uh, we are now also able to do some very advanced level of prediction modeling of you know a sale propensity yeah. based on past user interactions and purchases and in some of the more uh, you know data rich verticals such as uh, travel and hospitality i think the turf of war has changed dramatically today so it's no longer about personalization per se it's about accuracy in understanding user predilection and precision in targeting at the right moment so some call it uh, moments marketing right and that is only possible using deterministic data right so probabilistic data i think traditionally has been used to provide the scale as there wasn't ever enough size of a uh, deterministic audience but now with increased focus on first party data across the spectrums brands are overcoming this challenge and rightly so because this approach gives rich dividends uh, not just in the short term but also makes brands future proof so in the short term you see both engagement rates as well as efficiency improve but in the long term you get prepared for the world without third party cookie and and deprecation of other mobile identifiers right and therefore these brands have really solved the reach problem and are able to therefore deliver personalization at scale that is uh, based on deterministic data yeah so you know i have been a part of ecosystems where reach frequency effectiveness is a is a very integral part of the entire planning framework and obviously the there is not enough uh programmatically available data on on probabilistic uh, things so ma sanga the the whole you are sitting um you know as a as telco telcom cell where uh, there is a very large emphasis on the data mining and data modeling and data you know uh, um, available at scale so your thoughts on how brands currently needs to or what is the probably one of the key challenges brands put forward in front in front of you when you talk to them and how are you you know trying to devise strategies along with it yeah i guess i'm i'm totally 100% with uh, with rajan mentioning before and like you mentioned and uh, personalization at scale i mean wh- wh- one of the key things is uh, when we're talking about the relevancy creating context and accuracy sometimes brands and advertisers forget or marketers forget about the scale itself uh, i mean how how you can grow if you, if you cannot secure the next level of your scale so that's this one thing but maybe i i take one step back because first and foremost i think we can think of the basic first which is understanding your audience as a subject instead of an object because usually uh, when think about the data usually marketers just see okay what what is the roi what is my input budget versus the the impact that solely rely on the numbers i mean sometimes we just forget that our consumer uh, our audience is not just about the numbers 
But this interesting because using the data itself, we can understand the market better, but not only better, but also earlier and faster. I guess I guess those those three keys becoming uh, key pillars why we need to understand the data driven marketing even thoroughly, because not only we need to reach the right audience, but also better context and richer insights, uh, having a micro moments along the consumer journey because consumer journey doesn't just one straight line, right? It can go up and down the off ramp, yeah. the on ramp. People just yeah. being incentivized towards a promo. People just being uh uh disgusting with some brands because of this and that so we need to understand those micro moments along the consumer journey path uh and at alcom cell probably saying because we're sitting uh on the throne of data of 160 million uh users in indonesia uh more than 50 percent of the market share we have all of those and uh, uh our team of data science and data engineering works so hard to so we can help not only about connectivity and telecommunications of the side of the business, but also tapping into the marketing and how we can reach the consumer and the audience to help the, the marketing industry. Uh, and thus understanding how the environment of the data can help marketers to activate the audience is becoming also important because in Ramadan, we are talking about the, the surging of the needs. Uh, and those micro moments is becoming like previously we were, we we're discussing slightly different how people thinking about which baju koko to buy, which uh, uh, which uh, hijab to to choose and when to wear it because those micro moments becoming more important to understand. So again, brands can understand the context better towards this audience. Yeah, so uh, I think taking we 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 understood about the consumer behavior, we understood about the data. Um, you know, segmentation and the first party and the, the client strategy. We also understood about the data availability from a, from a source like Telcom Cell. So Rajan, the question then comes that in a, in a, in a scenario like Ramadan, in a, in a planning exercise, uh, can you share us any category level examples in terms of what kind of first party data have you or your teams have used? Or what kind of, uh, uh, you know, what, what, are, what is the narrative you want to build for brands to start using more and more first party data in that sense? Any examples you can share with us? Right, and absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's actually one of my favorite topics. Uh, almost all of the brands that we work with at Mindshare have at some level now increased focus on first party data than, let's say, two years ago. And on the back of that, we have multiple use cases uh, which are sort of delivering rich dividends. Uh, we know that people tend to get overboard. You know, let me just try to bring that into the context of Ramadan, right? Um, so the fact that we know that people tend to get overboard with spending during Ramadan, some even hold back uh, shopping until the Ramadan period, right. you know, both for its auspicious nature, but also in the expectation of better deals. Uh, and this varies from category to category, right? So for instance, in consumer electronics uh, category, the purchases increase by about 48% during Ramadan, right? Mm. Now, this, however, doesn't mean that the consumers aren't searching and interacting with your brands before Ramadan. Right. And so smarter brands, what they're doing is they're capturing first-party data all year round at every opportunity, but especially in the lead-up to Ramadan. Correct. Consumers who have shown interest in your brands should be on the highest priority list to convert during Ramadan, right? Now, this strategy is especially productive during Ramadan also because of all the extensive clutter and buzz that gets created, right? And so to get better results, uh, you cannot be spread thin in terms of your media investments across all sorts of audience, across funnel stages. You should instead double down on audiences that have shown interest and propensity to buy towards you know, your brand. And these audiences are best captured and nurtured as first party data. Now in terms of example, uh, you know, a couple that I could think of. So let's say in uh, consumer electronics category, uh, knowing the average duration in which uh, users change their handset, let's say uh, two years, right? Now brands are tapping into their CRM databases to identify such users who might be now ready to purchase again this year, 
right? Similarly for hospitality and travel, I think pretty simple. Yeah. Just tapping into their site and app analytics could give them very, very high propensity audiences to convert. Also, you know, in consumable categories like makeup and beauty, uh, you know, the products generally have a fixed life, right? And so brands here convert first time buyers into repeat buyers using first party data on purchase history, right? And so, yes, the so brands are definitely leveraging uh, this data, but of course some are doing more than the others. Absolutely, there are immense possibilities in terms of how this, uh, the propensity models and uh, likelihood models can be created using big data. Uh, and I know I'm entering uh, Masranga's territory uh, so much longer, the, the question is, yes, there is enough and more data available. Do you really think that brands are utilizing all that in the right fashion? What, 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 what are your examples you need to share when, when this topic comes in, right? I'm sure you, you have tons of data and you have a data modeling team, which is ready to go, but what does the other side look like for you? Yeah, I guess, I guess when, when we're talking about how we utilize data to the fullest, uh, I guess there's, there's no... There's no roof for that, right? Uh, it's, it can be all, always getting higher and higher. So, for example, when we're talking about the online shoppers, when we're talking about the e-commerce, uh, we sometimes believe that there's uh, there's a distinct uh, differences between the number one player of the e-commerce uh, with, with the rest. But actually, our data says that it's the other way around when the festivity happening. So when we are saying the harbolness, when we are saying Ramadan, that's also the time when the customer and the, uh, the user is becoming less and less loyal. So our data shows when the month of festivity happens, 30% uh, of us uh, usually the loyal customers of the e one of e-commerce becoming uh, accessing the multiple, the multiple others of the e-commerce. Because of why? Because of again, everyone's looking for the promo. Everyone's looking for uh, for the gratis onkir and all etc. So uh, festivity also drives that kind of uh, non-loyal uh, behavior. Uh, this is such an interesting insights. But aside of that, um, this is also becoming interesting because we're thinking as a telco data owner, we are not uh, we we supposed to be not only thinking about what is the insight, but how we can activate this uh, and, and make, make the real impact. That's why uh, such an interesting partnership uh, we are building with Inmobi because we know that uh, Telecom Cell have this huge data that can make impact, but we need the, the advertising technology uh, partner, which already credible in the market. That's why we are partnering with Inmobi. And then we are thinking about how we can help uh, advertisers to tap in into the right audience. So that's that's one one of the key uh, key factors, and maybe chiming in what uh, what previous Rajan mentioned, the first party, especially when when it's uh, cookies will be obsolete soon. Uh, that's one of the key factors for advertisers to groom and to manage their own first party data, because of to to do uh, the concept of look alike, looking out into your next source of growth having the solid seed of your first party data uh, with a richness of uh, insights is becoming critical. Because us, for example, Telkom Cell and Mobi, we can create to look like we can open the market, yeah. but it depends also with uh, how strong is the seed of the audience. And yeah. when the seed is also uh, is already powerful, we can we can do so much. For example, we can, we can tap into the right behavior. We can predict, uh, pre uh, previously we are mentioning about the propensity, Yep. We are talking about uh, specific mobility of the uh, the customer and the audience. We yep. can definitely step into that. No, absolutely. So, so thank you for mentioning the partnership because uh, we at Inmobi are have always been working towards creating a, a self-sustained data strategy, right? Because obviously it's a very uh, volatile environment out there in terms of uh, IDFA and uh, third-party cookies deprecation and a lot of other stuff. And the way forward what we felt was a richness of first party data, which is there with you and partners like you and how we can combine that with the apographic data, which we already know about the consumer and create a very rich environment for advertisers, uh, you know, like Rajan, right? And, but that brings me to the 
the larger question I was asking you, uh, and this question is for Rajan. Uh, yes, there is enough in data available. I think Mass Ranga's team can churn out propensity, likelihood, likability, and a lot of other modeling. But are brands ready for it? Are brands ready to utilize it to the fullest possible extent at scale? Uh, obviously, it costs something. There is a there is a price component of it. There is a access component of it. There is a execution component of it. So, where do you think uh, you know other aspects like data, creative context, viewability, uh, timing? Are all those factors getting linked back into a larger strategy of data? I think that is where the the rubber hits the road. Right, right. No, absolutely. And I think I think I'm seeing more and more application of big data across almost all facets of uh, the typical campaign management, right? And of course, it varies from industry to industry, brand to brand. Uh, but for example, you know, be it uh, attribution modeling, right? Or dynamic creative with DCO yeah. or some of the latest contextual targeting tools or even on, you know, viewability and brand safety applications. Big data is everywhere. And I think we work with a very vibrant ecosystem of tech partners in Indonesia who enable this, you know, much like uh, Telcoms and, and in Mobi. Uh, and given the value that this generates for the brands, more and more brands have actually started to use them. So in my, you know, whatever little experience in the last uh, few years in Indonesia, I think uh, it is much, much uh, better than how it was before, right? And the way to approach this is to break down the aggregate data to its atomic core, right? That's the basic uh, philosophy. And uh, let me take some examples actually just to uh, showcase that. So um, one of the most useful application is cross-platform analytics, right? So as, as brands and, you know, running campaigns, we use multiple media platforms. Um, but when we bring all of that data together into one, uh, into one system, we are able to then find the most optimal path to purchase. And that is different for different set of audience. Now, what this has done is that it has turned the traditional approach of demo and other similar user characteristics based audience segmentation on its head. So what it does is it makes the consumer purchase journey puts that at the center of audience segmentation, meaning users with similar journeys are bucketed in individual segments, even if they are from diverse set of demo, geo, and SEC classes. Yeah. And then the role of media then becomes to cater to these different consumer journeys, right? And that's only possible if you put focused efforts in first capturing your uh, you know, campaign data and then apply the latest in data analytics to surface those insights. Uh, one other example, which is pretty, uh, you know, I'm most excited about actually, is the uh, consumer lifetime value estimation. Using a vast amount of historical data, as well as uh, machine learning, and developing your media strategies accordingly. Now, all of us have studied the theories back in the day, and to be fair, it's not entirely a new concept in practice. But what's new here is the, is the fact that we are now able to use large-scale deterministic data that you know that helps with the quality and accuracy of the predictions which are now much more closer to reality and you're just watching that unfold uh, really I, mean, I think it's a thing of beauty no so, so there is already a lot of categories of advertisers who are already doing it by the way if you go to any e-commerce you enter yeah. any e-commerce company they will be uh, probably they'll have more data science people than they have any other staff in the in the house right because data science that and you're absolutely right both of you were talking about moments marketing and it doesn't matter what the demo or the regular classification of an audience is he or she is about to uh, either he's purchasing or he's not purchasing right it's a very black and white world in e-commerce either you have purchased a product or not purchased a product if you have purchased then they will be retargeting on other products you can buy if you have not purchased why haven't you purchased it it's a very interesting, uh, you know, di dichotomous world, according to me. Uh, but talking about a lot of data, it will not be wise for me not to bring, bring Mas Ranga and talk about the incredible data science teams they have and some amazing 
data modeling uh, exercises which they do i really want you to tell our audience some of the examples of propensity likelihood and very interesting data modeling uh, exercises which you and your team do yeah i guess you're you're, you're putting it a little bit uh, setting up the expectation and i'm <laughs> <laughs> because because what's what's interesting is uh, us from the telco data perspective we have this data uh, and and uh, the team our data science and data engineer uh, works so hard to to make it impactful to make it meaningful uh, that, that's one thing uh, but to be very honest we not always creating uh, all the shiny new toys all the, the shiny new stuff for the advertising industry for example that's why we would like to partner up with more and more players in the industry but uh, one thing that we have in mind is because we know uh, uh, sort of like we know our customers we know we know the data uh, uh, along the time one of the things that we would like to put on the table is understanding the lifetime value like previously Rajan mentioned yeah because uh, again uh, with the lack of data previously marketers can only see the ROI in the short side right the, uh, the, the, the purchase happening now it's becoming evolving towards the loyalty uh, yeah. I mean, the marketing 4.0 books uh, telling us uh, to, to start looking into the loyalty. Uh, and then it's, it's uh, like you mentioned, uh, the e-commerce of the world has started thinking further about setting up the LTV, the LTV matrix, how, how they can measure the, the present value and the future value of their customers. So that uh, boils down into uh, uh, the jargon that we previously mentioned about the propensity, the likelihood, because it's it's easier for now if we tap in into the digital natives or the device uh, uh, verticals because they have the data. We can just plug in and uh, have the propensity, uh, the likelihood, the customer who would like to change their phones in the next three months. But uh, what we are working on currently is to uh, add more data points and more richness of the inside characteristic, for example, with the retail data. Imagine not only you can predict uh, who would like to change the phones in the next three months, but also which mom would like to buy which diapers for yeah. the next month, or uh, or uh, more uh, which female that would like to purchase uh, next week a specific female products that kind of stuff. So uh, again, uh, adding the data points and uh, more uh, inside characteristic into this data lake is becoming quite powerful. Uh, not only that, uh, we also would like to solve uh, a more fundamental uh, issues, which is tapping into your relevant audience, more and more relevant audience. Because like, like previously we mentioned, it's not only about the numbers, but understanding your uh, customers. And yeah. Rajan previously mentioned, not only about the data, but also the content, the communication, the creatives need to be relevant enough. So yeah. uh, we are having this 51 segment uh, of uh, specific characteristic and audience segmentation for us to use and tap into, but not stopping into that. So what's interesting is because we are using the telco data, understand uh, who use what and who use not, uh, who not use what. So we would like also to scale up the source of growth of, of the, the marketers uh, and tapping into the untapped market one. So for example, we are looking into the segment of non specific app user so i'm saying it uh, uh one of the huge uh, ota uh, like facebook instagram whatsapp or, or google we can try to look who's who's not using that in uh, of the outskirts of rural uh, of the indonesia because our data is quite good so that's a segment of non facebook users in indonesia rajan it's for this is, this is, interesting. This is interesting yeah yeah i guess, I guess that's, that's that's some 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 of the cases that we are working on uh my point is uh again talking about data is also talking about the test and learn so having the mindset to keep keep trying new stuff try now learn fast or else you won't be learning and regret later uh i guess that's that's one of the thing with 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 playing data towards the, the marketing the data driven marketing yeah absolutely i think in the in the entire the last 40, 45 minutes we were talking about, we talked about three aspects, you know, first aspect is to identify that ident how do we identify the user as closely as possible in the moment he or she is trying to do something or trying to act on something, right? 
The second aspect we talked about is to engage that the context, the creative, the DCO, the programmatic approach, uh, viewability, and a lot of other aspects are the second most critical aspect of it. The third and the most important, uh, uh, the tenet which we, we propagate at Inmobi is, you know, identify, engage, and convert. Because the brands, that is the, la the, the last mile, or that is where the action happens, right? Till, till that happens, till the conversion happens, everything else is mm, good to have, you know, great. But <laughs> if it is not converting, then all our, all our questions being, being asked that, is your strategy right? Is your audience right? Is your creative right? And everything else. So before we, you know, before we come to the end of the session, quick two minutes of from both of you on the e-commerce strategy of you know from a from a data point of view mastanga and probably rajan can talk about more from adoption point of view of brands and what we are trying to do uh, maybe let's start with rajan on this right so um, you know i think uh, you know there has been a classic tussle and uh, between uh, the broadcast media and precision media, right? And to be fair, both have had a role to play for a contemporary marketer. They have a funnel to, you know, uh, cater to. However, in my opinion, what we're currently lacking is to, to get the right balance between the two, given the developments in the last few years or so. Yeah. So while both TV and digital technologies have evolved, it is safe to say that the pace at which they evolved is vastly different. And now there's, you know, on account of this difference in pace, uh, there are opportunities created for digital, which are sort of eating away into the privileged space that TV traditionally enjoyed, right? Let me just sort of begin there. And case in point, and I think NM, uh, you would agree with me there, in Mobi Glance on mobile lock screen, yeah. which is essentially the TV of tomorrow in a person's <laughs> hand, catering to personal taste. So it provides you the reach of a broadcast while personalizing content based on user preferences and thereby, you know, um, just providing a very natural and seamless way for brands to tell their stories. Right? Okay. And there's just one example, there are plenty others out there. Uh, and so digital has successfully proved to be a medium to generate high awareness and help with brand building along the way, of course, providing the bottom funnel conversion support. And so in my opinion, uh, Ramadan is the period. And as you know, uh, both you and Ranga sort of alluded to, uh, is Ramadan is a period where you would want to convert demand rather than generating it, right? right. Uh, or at least converting should be a much higher priority. Yeah. Uh, so basically when people are really opening their wallets, give them your products, not your brand purpose. Right. You have uh, all the time throughout the year to, to build your brand. The latency which you have created over the last 12 months. That's the right. underlining thing. Masranga, your last comments on commerce and how all of this comes together. By the way, Glance also uses telecom cell data. I mean, both of them can be converted and create more uh, curated conversations and brand building. Oh, definitely, definitely. This, this is, sounds awesome. Uh, looking forward into Glance uh, penetrating the market in here. Uh, talking about the commerce and Ramadan, I guess um, totally agree with Rajan, echoing that uh, what needs to be done at first is thinking about that uh, Ramadan is not the one month. Uh, the conversion is not happening on the one month. So uh, uh, marketers should build the tension road to Ramadan. So uh, the, the campaign planning needs to start early. Uh, everything needs to be built up and then uh, Rip the soul when 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 Ramadan is happening. So that's that's one thing. The other thing is having a presence. So uh, having a presence on the road to. So when when we're saying start early, don't just start uh, day minus one month and then have nothing and then come again. Uh, just rip the soul. It, it cannot be done that way. So maintain the presence is also important because again, your brands not only competing in the same verticals. So when we're saying the, the, the food doesn't really compete with another food, but uh, the food compete with the fashion, compete yeah. with the baby products, compete with the, the, the mobile phones. Because again, uh, the share of wallet, the 100% of the wallet stays the same. It might grow, but you're competing to, to get the share of wallets from your customers. Um, so that's why. That's, that's, a, that's an amazing point to, to wrap up this session, uh, guys, because 
you are not competing with your category anymore a soap is not competing with soap a soap is competing with a shampoo a shampoo is competing with a uh, probably a pen and a car is competing with something else i mean right. uh, i think that is the reality in which we are living in and i think i will still go back to my three tenets of you know work on identifying audiences in the moment work on engaging with them using technologies and obviously the third thing give them a logical exit and as rajan said don't think of uh, brand proposing in ramadan that place is to sell your products mm-hmm. i think ramadan is the place where you can actually sell your all brand propositions and all your uh, brand relatability exercises you could have done in the rest of the months where you can talk uh, and you can create that latency of demand and that demand unlocking needs to happen in ramadan i think that's the part or the summary of whatever we have said in the last almost 1 hour of time uh, that brings me to the end of this session thank you so much gentlemen thank you mma for making it happen but before we go we have 3 minutes left and we have two questions i can see right now uh probably one question is um, for i i choose who probably i can give it to um quickly because we only have less time left rajan this question challenge for marketers is the last in the last two ramadan is that people were adjusting to their behavior with the so called new normal so of course there are two different pre pandemic ramadan uh, it's totally different now we are on the third ramadan with pandemic what would be the most anticipated trends in regards to consumer behavior quick one minute answer right <laughs> so i think that's pretty loaded question it's uh, i know it's but we to... have kind of covered most of it i don't know I, i agree so you know to be able to pinpoint the the you know trend that's going to be the most prominent in terms of consumer behavior i don't think i'm qualified uh, to answer that specifically but i do think that the some of the insights that we have been seeing uh, developing over the last two years right when you do your uh, consumer insight studies uh, you can now sort of bank on those insights more reliably because that consumer behavior that we were some of us at least who are sort of writing off as fads is here to stay yeah uh, if i can quote you one number uh, i think i saw that in one of the google researches it said uh, about more than 95% of users are going to continue using the sort of the digital uh, services or the kind of consumer journeys that have evolved over time going forward like starting this year too right so let me just leave it at that yeah sure uh, quickly i think uh, this question is to master anga optimizing first party data is mandatory and combining it with relevant third party data would optimize your strategy the question is how can data sensitive industries like banking and even telco uh could be combining first party and third party very loaded question <laughs> this is such a sensitive question not only such a sensitive data but a quick uh quick take on that um we are working so hard because again um, as uh, providing a data solutions from telco not selling data that's once and for all and and, and no one in this industry should ever selling the data uh one of the case uh, one of the most important case about data and managing it is having a consent so that's this one thing so that's why we are working so hard in platform cell to ensure all of the consent and not uh, not violating the privacy of the data so uh, how the first party and third party data can be combined i guess we need to ensure it's in a compliance manner of uh, properly having a right consent yeah. that's that's one of the most important thing and this should be taken actively not passively uh, so it's 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 not just we're sitting we're we're getting transferring the data and all but brands also need to work uh, the effort towards uh, uh, collecting the active content thank you so much i know we are absolutely out of time we have couple more questions but we will send it to the speakers uh, thank you uh, audience for putting those questions sorry we could not answer that but we will make sure that the respective uh, part uh, you know speakers will respond to you in uh, in a, in an email or in the chat thank you shanti over to you <laughs> Thank you thank you gentlemen semuanya terima kasih banyak thank you mas ranga mas rajan and em <laughs> this was extremely insightful and interesting especially for you know for several brands from different areas of businesses agencies publishers others who are here as well today it's always good you know to have multiple perspectives from various verticals of the industry so the audience can also gain knowledge from one another perhaps you know 
have a wider viewpoint to learn how to have better engagement, better collaboration, find a win-win solution for all. And I love the challenges that you gave each other on the panel, you know, the, <laughs> I love that. And I, and I hope that, you know, I hope that we continue to take these learnings that we gained today to take this entire Ramadan momentum, uh, success stories, learnings forward to all of 2022, because there's some things we can always kind of bring forward, uh, some things we have to focus on, uh, you know, as as discussed. But I think this has been great. Thank you. Terima kasih. Jaga kesehatan semuanya. Stay well. Keep safe. Have a brilliant long weekend ahead. Sampai ketemu lagi. Terima kasih. Thank you, Thank you, Anem. Thank you, Rajan. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.